So we're at a time in history when many of the old systems are clearly crumbling away. Some people are more aware of this than others, but regardless, most people are feeling it physically, mentally, emotionally, even spiritually. It's hard to stay calm sometimes in that kind of storm of change. There's lots of anxiety, frustration, doubt, yet the ability to create a calm state of mind leads to growth, resilience, better solutions, and huge rewards if you can find your inner center and stay there no matter what's going on around you. Ironically, part of what causes the lack of calm is this mysterious and uncomfortable feeling that I'll call growing pains. Whenever you're going through huge transitions personally or as part of a larger collective, there are inevitable growing pains. In the big picture, the growth ultimately leads to something good, but it's like that old saying, when one door closes, another opens. But those dark hallways can be a bitch. In this episode, we'll cover how to handle those dark hallways, the abyss, the free fall between one secure reality and another, just knowing they're in many ways just growing pains can help a lot as we all navigate this coming evolution in human consciousness. Hi, I'm Carly Rear, and this is the Golden Age Timeline Podcast. So I've been a change leadership expert for years, speaking all over the world on this topic, coaching people, offering seminars and webinars. I've done a lot of research, both empirical and through personal and professional means. So I've really immersed myself in all aspects of what makes people react so much to big changes in their life, even when you think you want the change. There's a survival brain activation even if you think at the conscious level, hey, I'm cool with this change, no big deal. Yet the body is reacting, or you're having strange dreams or weird feelings. So I bring this up now because there's massive changes, like the financial system appears to be crashing, there's unprecedented supply chain issues, political tensions, health crises, pending war, and on and on. I mean, compare four years ago to now in terms of the amount of change we're dealing with, most people are affected in some way. Some are more conscious of how it's affecting them personally than others. But now is a good time to think about how to take care of yourself during this massive transition. One way is to first just acknowledge that strange symptoms, physically, mentally, emotionally, may be a deeper, more subconscious part of you reacting at this survival brain level to all these world changes. On top of that, you may be dealing with a lot of transition in your personal life, causing the same reaction and amplifying it. Now, if you look back on your life, chances are you've gone through massive change, whether you chose the change or not, like leaving home, moving house, starting a new relationship, ending a significant relationship, a health crisis, and so many other common things we humans face throughout the course of our lives. During that time, you probably experienced growing pains. Maybe as you shifted from child to teenager, you were supremely moody. Some people experience digestive issues when they travel. Some people turn to substances more to quell negative thoughts during a breakup. You might not say to yourself at the time, this is just growing pains. But if you look back, once you're through the big change, you can see that the agitated physical, mental, and emotional states were a symptom of having to grow, of having to let go of comfort and security and the known universe to experience discomfort, insecurity, and the unknown. So several of my coaching clients and colleagues are having strange symptoms right now, and me as well, so maybe you can relate. For example, over the last two years, I've had this strange kind of thing which I discovered has a name, restless leg syndrome. There are many theories about what causes it, but in my case, it was something I didn't suspect at all. 
Maybe you're familiar with it. Just as you're falling asleep and your brain waves change, your legs start twitching and it's hard to fall asleep because the sudden involuntary movement wakes you up. So I decided to do some research. Is this a neurological disorder? After further investigation regarding my case, I don't think it is. In other people's situation, it might be. But there's lots of theories and after a while of trying different remedies, it didn't work. I did try to ask my higher mind, you know, that wise aspect of self that you can call on to help you get solutions. At first, when I asked, nothing came to mind. So one night I can't sleep because of this restless leg thing. I thought, I'll just entertain myself with something on YouTube. Here's the weird thing. I kept trying to load this particular YouTube video, but another one kept coming up, which was called 100% pure Schumann resonance for grounding, stability, and well-being. I was getting annoyed because that's not the video I wanted to watch and it kept popping up. At one point I thought, oh, maybe I'm supposed to listen to this. I did call on my higher mind a while back for a solution. Maybe this is it. When I did listen to it, it's just this humming sound. Now I'm familiar with binaural beats as we put these in the background of our mind story blueprints, which can help to enhance certain brainwave states. And why you'd want to change your brainwave state is that certain brainwaves help you sleep or be more calm. Certain ones help you meditate. Certain ones help you be very awake and aware. Some help you be more creative and so on. So we use it to help people manifest good habits of mind. So clearly my ability to sleep was being impaired. So I decided I would just lie in bed and listen to this humming sound, this 100% pure Schumann resonance. And I fell asleep soon after that. And I had a great night's sleep. Interesting. The next night when I started having the restless leg syndrome again, I put on the same Schumann resonance. And again, I fell asleep right away, had a great sleep. After the third night of the same thing, I had to learn more. (laughs) So this particular production uploaded to YouTube of the Schumann Resonance is nine hours of the same humming sound. So you just turn it on and it'll stay on all night. It's produced by Catalyst University, but there's lots of information online in many places about the Schumann Resonance and how healthy it is to listen to it because there's a certain vibration that comes through the sound and amplifies its healing effect. Fascinating, had to learn more. So the Schumann resonance, if you don't already know, is known as the Earth's natural heartbeat rhythm and is a frequency of 7.83 Hertz. An interesting fact is that 7.83 Hertz frequency is also the alpha theta brainwave frequency in the human brain. Our modern technology uses frequencies that are not harmonious with the earth or with our physical body. And that is why the Schumann resonance is being studied and why listening to it can help ground your body and heal you. Why I'm telling you this is that I'm hearing how lots of people are having these growing pains, these ascension symptoms or whatever you want to call them. They're different in different people. However, a bad night's sleep, agitation, headaches, bad digestion, stuffed up sinuses, strange aches and pains in the body are common. Now, of course, those could be normal issues you've had for years, but I'm noticing a lot of people are having many more of these over the last years, and that's dialing up exponentially over the last few months. Now that kind of thing can make it hard for you to do your work or to be there for your family, or to just stay healthy and energized and can make you worried on top of all the other things you might be fretting about. Now, if you have already eliminated things like unusual food, drinks, supplements, medicines, air quality that you may have ingested or allergies or sickness as the culprit, let's look at what it could be. Now, without getting too technical, about the Schumann resonance. In other words, I'll keep this simple. It's something that's measured and you can even go to this website where you can see what's happening on any given day around the world. 
and they measure it at a place in Siberia. But I think it's important to understand what is happening right now because this energy is growing exponentially like never before in recorded history. And if you don't know what it is and you don't know how to manage it, it can be very disconcerting. <laughs> it's rising higher than it's ever been before and it comes from the sun. And we are having more and more solar activity than we've ever had. And it affects our mind, our body, our emotions, our spirit, and the earth as a whole. And all of us are affected by it. But some people notice it more than others. It just depends on how sensitive you are. I tend to be one of those people who are very sensitive to things like that. I'm like this barometer. <laughs> if it's affecting me, and I know it's growing soon, it will affect a lot more people who are not as sensitive to those kind of things. So the Schumann resonance is our global electromagnetic resonance generated and excited by lightning discharges in the cavity formed by the Earth's surface and the ionosphere. The ionosphere is a kind of sheath of protective energy around the Earth. It's the region of the Earth's atmosphere that stretches roughly from 30 miles above the surface to about 620 miles above the surface and forms a boundary between Earth's lower atmosphere and the vacuum of space. The Schumann resonances, therefore, are electromagnetic waves that exist in that cavity. In 1952, German physicist Professor Winfried Otto Schumann of the Technical University of Munich began attempting to answer whether the Earth itself has a frequency, like a pulse. Through a series of calculations, he deduced that there was this pulse of the Earth ionosphere space, which he found to be 7.83 hertz, with some fluctuations above and below. However, in January of 2017, the Schumann resonance reached frequencies of above 36 hertz. So we're going from 7.83 to 36, which was totally unusual. Historically, any rise above 15 hertz was considered very large. So scientists are puzzled. <laughs> now, this last week, it reached 40 hertz. So some people say that the Schumann resonance can be affected by human consciousness both ways. <laughs> we affect it and it affects us. So whether masses of people are feeling peaceful or fearful or tense or jubilant, <laughs> it affects the Schumann resonance. In other words, you could be in one frame of mind, but if the majority of the world is in another frame of mind and that amplifies, you can easily get pulled into that and not understand where it's coming from. Now, in regards to these symptoms, some people don't feel that physically, but they might feel like emotionally all over the place. Or some people manifest imbalances more mentally, like brain fog, not remembering things, feeling disorganized or overwhelmed or unable to focus. Or you might be having strange dreams or lots of dreams when normally you don't dream or don't remember your dreams. Or you're having repeated dreams about one particular person in your past, regardless of what way it shows up for you, it's important to take care of yourself because this will help you through it much more easily. Now, it often does show up as a feeling like there's this excessive electricity running through your body, like your nervous system is lit up. <laughs> That's how it felt for me with the restless leg thing. It's where you can feel wired and tired at the same time. Exhausted headaches, heart fluttering, maybe increased blood pressure. So an increase in solar activity does affect the heart. Other things I've heard of and have experienced myself are feeling off balance, somehow nauseated for no reason, knots in the stomach, skin irritations or weird breakouts burning up at times, then suddenly feeling cold, so feeling really hot and then really cold, or just this general malaise where you feel lethargic, your lymph system feels clogged up with toxins. So obviously 
anything you can do to take care of yourself is great. Like get a good night's sleep, nap when you're tired, honor your body's need for rest, peacefulness, quiet. Even if you have a million things to do on your task list, now I'll put the link to the 100% Pure Schumann Resonance for Grounding, Stability, and Well-Being YouTube video in the show notes and see if that helped you sleep. I literally put it on my iPod or iPad next to my bed, although you can nap with it and put earphones in as well. Or you can sit and meditate and listen to it or sit in the garden and listen to it. Now, of course, eat a healthy diet. <laughs> Drink lots of water that's ideally purified, gentle movements like yoga or tai chi or qigong or walk in nature, of course, is always good. But sometimes vigorous movement is really good, like lifting weights, running, going on the elliptical, hiking steep trails. I know for me, intense exercise really helps me get grounded and healthier, but it's different for different people. So. Of course, getting good, clean, fresh air and doing breathing exercises that cleanse the lungs is great. You can find a lot of those on YouTube. Now do avoid downing too many supplements or health products or going to one practitioner after another or using unusual pills or medicines that your body isn't used to. I say that because I sense our bodies have been expecting this. We know we're going through growing pains individually and globally. And if we just take care of our bodies, they will do what needs to be done. And this is something you're going to have to use your own intuition on, whether you need extra help or is it just something you can allow to have happen? It's almost like a woman giving birth. The body knows exactly what to do to prepare. You just need to take care of yourself and make it easier for the body to do its job of birthing. And we are birthing a new self in many ways. So if we start loading things on that are foreign to our system, it can actually make it worse. Now I know that many of you listening know these things and do many of them, but sometimes when you have a lot going on in your life, it's easy to let those things fall by the wayside. <laughs> Or when others are influencing you to try this or do that, sometimes you go away from your own inner wisdom about what's right. I'm just saying that now more than ever, because of what's affecting the whole earth, it's important to be ready for what's coming because if you don't take care of yourself, you don't get this chance to grow and evolve and you may miss out on the most amazing opportunity to evolve into this golden age. So as I said, some people might feel like they just put a finger in an electrical outlet. So you might feel like you're vibrating sometimes, like you're about to blast off into space. And in some ways, maybe you are, you're blasting off into this new inner space. <laughs> and maybe you feel like there's all this debris in your system. And a metaphor for that might be like, you're going to be rocketing into this next evolution of yourself. And so the debris is going to be burning away to help you get there. So all those kind of feelings are the feeling you get when you're ascending towards a higher density world, when you get this high vibrational new energy that you haven't yet integrated into your system properly. So at first it's a bit uncomfortable and your system has to learn how to handle that higher vibrational energy. And so you have to kind of do it slowly. So you might feel these electrical currents going up and down through your body or even full body shakes. Now, of course, many of us don't really know what it means to ascend. And there are many theories that we are moving to this higher vibrational level plane living on an earth where it's less dense, less duality, there's more peacefulness, more unity. But if you're not ready for it, if you're not opening up to that and learning how to live in that higher frequency level, you might miss out on getting there. So the reason I suggested this Schumann resonance humming sound is because it directly helps you get balanced and grounded to the earth and helps you handle this kind of lightning energy that's coming towards the earth which is also affecting your body. It's like grounding electricity. Other ways to get grounded are to walk barefoot on the earth or walk on the sandy beach in your bare feet 
or on the grass or on a lawn or lay down on the ground or the lawn or the beach. <laughs> Being out in nature as much as possible is important. So hug a tree, <laughs> do some gardening, walk by a body of water, watch the birds outside your window. Now, part of you might think that isn't going to make much difference. It's a waste of time. It's boring even. <laughs> Because maybe an agitated brainwave state is more comfortable and familiar, but if you stay with that connection to nature long enough, you'll notice your brain waves calming down. And this is very important. So just notice before and after you've spent some time in nature or grounding yourself, how your mind feels, how your body feels. Most people, as I said, feel more grounded, more focused, but in a peaceful way, more energized. And if you notice the before and after, it will make you more motivated to do it again and to break free of the hypnotic effect of that highly agitated beta brainwave state that many of us are in as we're rushing through our day. And it'll help you prioritize that quiet state over getting one more thing done on your to-do list. <laughs> Because maybe a lot of those things don't really matter. <laughs> like sometimes if you relook at a long to-do list from this place of peacefulness, you kind of think, I don't really need to do a lot of that stuff. Of course, anything to lengthen your spine is key because your spine is your ascension column. So when your spine gets tense or has blockages, it stunts your growth. For example, think about how often everyone's sitting forward like looking at their phone, driving a car, on computer, everything's forward. Now I used to do yoga three times a week. Now I'm doing it every day because any kind of backward bending posture feels so important for this, just to balance out the spine. I also do side bending of the spine, so bending one way and then the other. Anything to open up the sacrum area is really important, you know, at the base of the spine, like hip stretches, helping your hamstrings and quadricep muscles and the IT bands that run down the sides of the legs to open up and all the ligaments and fascia surrounding the sacrum at the bottom of the spine. All of that will really help with these growing pains. The more loose and open all that is, the better. The more jammed up, the more uncomfortable it's all going to be. So now I do at least 10 minutes of those kind of stretches three times a day, morning, noon, and night. And of course, anything you can do to detox is great. I'm a big believer in that, but people need to do that in whatever way they feel comfortable. You can use supplements to detox, fasting, enemas, colonics, just eating a really alkaline diet, taking salt baths, even walking in nature and just breathing good fresh air is a form of detox. Letting go emotionally or physically of tension in your body by just bringing your breath and your attention to any tense place in your body, feeding it with acceptance, the emotion of acceptance, understanding, and just your attention there and your breath, and it starts to melt, it starts to dissolve. And it might happen right away, or it might take several rounds of doing that, or you might do it and you think, oh, nothing's happening, but then later on in the day, it seems to have shifted. Because we're all, melting old infrastructures in our body-mind system right now, melting old emotional wounds, old memories, or bad mind stories stuck in the body, opening up to new healing, more empowered memories, better mind stories. We're doing a system overhaul. We're getting a new operating system. We're renovating. <laughs> so it's uncomfortable. So if you've ever lived in a house being renovated, it's kind of the same thing. It's dusty, it's dirty, it's inconvenient, but once it's done, you're so glad you did it. So keep your eye on the prize here. Now what might happen, and this is a reason some people don't want to do these grounding processes, is that negative emotions can start to percolate to the surface. Because we encounter things almost every day of our life that can negatively affect us. And if you're not processing those emotions regularly, what happens is they get stored up in your body. And the only time you can process them is when either you're asleep 
or when you give yourself quiet time. Because if you're busy and rushing around, your body can't do that. And that's why often people have agitated sleep or agitated dreams. It's you're working all this stuff out or they're feeling agitated when they try to just be calm and still they go, oh, I'm going to meditate. And then their mind races with all these negative thoughts. And so they think, ah, I just don't know how to meditate. (laughs) But it's just that you haven't learned how to process that energy to get to the calm, the peace and the stillness. But the good news is that going through the detoxing of those negative emotions leads you to this incredible place of a kind of emotional, mental purity and healthfulness in the body. And you're so glad you did it. And it really doesn't have to take that long. Just sometimes a few moments of acknowledging the feeling, breathing it through and it's gone. Now, sometimes it lasts longer depending on how much of a backlog you have, but you can do it a bit at a time. Like you might feel yourself feeling angry or wanting to cry or remembering something from years ago that still irritates you. So just let yourself feel angry or sad or grief or disappointed or frustrated or embarrassed or irritated. People are so afraid to let themselves feel those feelings because they're afraid they'll never come back from it. They'll just go into a feeling of sadness and maybe start to feel the tears come up and they feel like their whole world will fall apart. They'll never stop crying, which is kind of a strange and illogical fear if you really think about it, but it's very common. Now, I'm sure you've had times in your life where you just let yourself cry. You let yourself feel really angry about something. Now, I don't mean you went and broke a bunch of dishes, but maybe that worked (laughs) or had a big emotional meltdown in front of strangers, (laughs) but you can take some time alone and just let yourself feel the feelings. And you'll be amazed that they'll come and they'll go just like the clouds. In fact, if you've been the kind of person who does vigorous exercise, you might notice anger come up as you run or as you hike, you just feel this tension and this nervousness and this fear sort of moving through your body. But once you finish, you just feel amazing because it's out of your system. As long as you don't try to give meaning to those feelings, attach something to it, because sometimes it's something that happened like 22 years ago and you don't remember what it was, but the motion just stayed lodged in your left shoulder, for example, or you had a car accident and the fear is still lodged in your right foot from when you slammed on the brakes. So you just feel this intense fear as you're doing some stretching with your feet, this terror for a few minutes, and then it moves out of your foot. And then you stop having these weird foot problems. Now, sometimes it takes more than just one time of doing those kind of things, but I've had strange emotions from doing an unusual stretch. I literally can't remember what the instant was, why I felt that way, but I just allow myself to feel this deep sadness, like doing a hamstring stretch, (laughs) breathe through it. And then it goes away and I feel fine again. You really don't want to hold on to that stuff. If you want to move towards this new renaissance in human evolution. Now, sometimes old memories will come up that do elicit negative feelings, bittersweet feelings. You know, when someone left you or that group of people left you out or that time you humiliated yourself or when that person betrayed you, that's also part of the growing pains. You might have memories associated, thoughts associated with these things. As I talked about in other episodes, it's time to give new meanings to those situations. Now, this isn't to devalue the pain that you experience from it. Honor the pain, honor feelings, let yourself feel them. But if you only ever see that situation from a negative point of view, you're missing out on getting the benefits, the learning, the growth. So it keeps coming up lodged in your body somewhere because you didn't learn from it. So ask yourself, what was good about that? What could I have learned from that situation that I have yet to learn? How might I be a better person because I went through that? 
like maybe I wouldn't be the person I am today with the skills, experience, resilience, compassion I have now if I didn't go through that. For example, my parents divorced when I was 10 years old and my mother moved out. She just didn't want to be a mother anymore, or at least not full time. She had my sister and I one day a week and that's all she could handle. She had done all the parenting for the first 10 years of my life because my father worked as a manager of this high-end golf club and he was there night and day, seven days a week. He was never around. And anyways, it was a woman's job to raise children. He was old school that way. So when she left, he had no idea what to do. And he had to figure out how to work from home so that somebody would be home for the kids. And I took their divorce very personally at the time, thinking she left because of me. And I was annoyed because my father didn't know how to cook or clean. So that meant my sister and I had to figure out how to do that. But in retrospect, there are so many gifts I got out of that experience. I learned how to cook and clean at a young age. I had to get part-time jobs because money was tight after the divorce, which gave me job skills taught me self-motivation, self-responsibility, gave me independence and freedom because it was my money to do with what I wanted. And I didn't get any help from my parents to find work as, say, an 11-year-old. So I had to be resourceful and knock on doors and create a resume and prove my worth, which gave me self-confidence. Also, the emotional mayhem in my family made me interested in psychology and mindset and interpersonal communication and led me to a career as first a counselor, then a coach and an inspirational speaker and a trainer on communication and mindset. It also gave me compassion and insights for those who also came from broken homes who ended up like being my clients. If you've never gone through a hardship and you're trying to help someone else in that same position, it's more of an intellectual rather than a felt experience, and they notice it. By going through this experience and choosing to learn and grow from it, then it made me more helpful to people who, say, been abandoned by their mothers or who had strife in their family or who had communication and mindset issues. If everything went great, all that stuff was easy for me, I probably wouldn't have the motivation, the skill set, and compassion necessary to do those roles in my adult years. And it also made me interested at a sociological level about why there was suddenly a rash of divorces, especially during that time and that place in history when I was growing up. In literally a few years, the norm was to come from a united household with both parents to suddenly the norm being to come from a broken home. Now, of course, my findings on that topic are for a whole other episode. (laughs) Suffice it to say, if something challenging happened to you, it may have driven you to explore certain areas of life, be of assistance to others in that area, gain certain skill sets you wouldn't normally have, and much more. So think about any experience in your life where it felt hard, maybe you even felt like a victim at the time, you felt like someone did you wrong, where maybe you still look back at it with bad feelings. So just get into a peaceful state and look at it from fresh eyes and just make a list as big and long a list as you can possibly do. What was good? What did you learn? How did it bring you where you are today? What are the skills, insights, motivations, understandings, and strengths you wouldn't have if you didn't go through that? That exercise alone will help you transmute that negative mind story. You'll reframe it in an empowering way. And when you think about it, you won't have these bad feelings come up You'll either feel good about it or neutral about it, which is how it is for me. So that you can grow and evolve yourself. And strangely enough, it will often positively affect those around you now and those involved back then. Because if you don't clear that stuff out, you tend to look through a glass darkly. In other words, you tend to expect more of the same in your future. If you clear it out, you reframe the experience from what you learned, honoring 
and processing the feelings, you create a clean slate. It's like the metaphor of the old forest that's full of debris. Once the debris fills up to a certain extent, nature is very wise, it creates a naturally occurring forest fire and it burns that all away and turns the soil very fertile for the next generation of forest. So we need to be continually burning away the old to make room for the new. If you don't do it consciously, life usually brings you something to make you do it. So the bottom line is that anything uncomfortable coming to you right now is coming to you to be healed. It's a good thing. And when you're moving close to the light, to a higher vibrational level, anything that's dark, anything of a lower vibrational nature will naturally bubble to the surface to be dealt with so it can be healed and transmuted. So everything in your life, everything in the universe can be neutralized with a kind, compassionate attention, your focus and attention, this unconditional love and acceptance of it. Just focus your breath, your attention on it, welcome it, accept it, and it naturally transforms. Okay, that's it for today. Do check out the Mind Story Blueprint course for a series of short audios to help you build better habits of mind. In the background are binaural beats and beautifully composed music that helps your brain waves balance and helps you heal body, mind, and emotions. See the link in the show notes or go to mindstoryacademy.com and just scroll down to the orange square and just click on that. And you'll also see the Schumann Resonance video in the show notes too. In the meantime, please hit subscribe. Please like this episode and do share it if you liked it so that others can find it. And in the meantime, have a wonderful week. Bye for now.